If I were really thinking about this as a business proposition, I would never make this planet. It couldn't be done. It's too expensive. The only way to make this planet is, is for love and for art. Josh is both a traditional artist. Uh, the components he uses to make his worlds have been made by glassmakers for centuries. What Josh brings to it is his own imagination and his vision of these glass worlds that he, he creates and the, the mastery to um, bring his creation to fruition. My planets are little worlds that are like a planet floating in space with continents and oceans. A mega planet is just the biggest one of those things that I can try to make. David Whitehouse, the director of the museum, and Constantina Oldno, the curator of contemporary glass, heard me talk about making a 100-pound planet, and they realized that Corning was about to need its 1,000th paperweight. And somehow they put those two together that they just like, I think they just like the ring of it, 100-pound planet, 1,000th paperweight in the collection, and they asked me to make that, that planet. Well, he, here we were a couple of years ago, uh, getting ready to add the 1,000th paperweight to our collection. We wanted it to be a significant addition to the collection. We wanted so something that we would be very pleased to, to shout about. And lo and behold, Josh is making us a 100-pound paperweight, the first 100-pound paperweight ever. And we're very glad it's going to be our 1,000th paperweight. And the reason I took the commission was because it allows me to try to add more elements and more uh, information, thousands of pieces of cane, thousands of little things to look at that hopefully will intrigue and fascinate and amaze uh, someone, not just, not just this week, but for years and years and perhaps generations to come. When I began this project, I really had no idea how long it was really gonna take. I think if I'd known that uh, of all the things that would have been involved in it, that, that I would have been a lot more daunted by the prospect. Um, I kind of, I kind of kept realizing, oh, I have to do this, and I have to do this, and I have to do that, and I have to do this other thing. And it kind of mushroomed into an all-encompassing thing that took almost a year and a half to do. I think um, one thing about this project is that it became a living entity, something that, I, that was always at the back of my mind, no matter what I was doing, no matter whether it was late at night, first thing in the morning, I was always thinking about how am I going to make this piece? How am I going to make it interesting? What am I going to do? And in fact, that constant thing at the back of my mind, I think, has really made a difference because it made me think about aesthetics. What, what can I do to make this piece be um, just a, well, a qu it's only 25% bigger than something I've ever done before, but I need to make it the best of what I've ever done. In attempt two, the most important thing, again, is not the mechanics of how to make this. What's important is what this thing looks like. What is the shape of this? It has to be really a, a very nice, pleasing sphere. And of course, what's inside of it is, 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 that's what it's all about, making the art. Let me move the torch away when I come near you. Nine and a half. 
Did you guys see the surface of this? It's absolutely, it's just perfect. Break. Everybody knew what we were getting into, and I think everybody had a much more serious attitude about it, and, and a much higher level of paying attention and understanding that and this is hole. serious, yeah. this is really yeah. serious. And you know, it's funny, but it, it just, it started to, it just went along and it was so, so much smoother on the second time through. I worry a little bit that we won't gather enough. I need 13 and a half to be absolutely, absolutely sure we're over 100 pounds. It's likely that I'm gonna have, need help to break out, out. No, I got it, I got it. Come on out. All right, can you guys lift it right up? Oh, that's heavy. Open. Yeah, good. Close the door. I, I, I don't want to say anything. This one's incredible. It's really great. It's just right. If we can just get into the into the kneeling oven, everything will be cool. This is incredible. There's a little bit of unevenness on the top. We need the double torch. I want to leave it alone. I don't want to mess with it anymore. And those new jacks work perfectly. We just just put it into it. It's much more force than I could do with my one hand. Jonathan and I together just cranked down on it and cut it right in. It was perfect. Just breaking the piece of glass off the blowpipe is, turn, please. One quarter it turn. looks so simple. Two. Ultimately, you just whack it with a hammer and it falls off. Well, it's not that the simple. It's gotta be the blowpipe. It's, it, uh, it, you have to, there's a lot of planning that goes into just exactly how you hit it and where you hit it. Get behind me. Go. Come on, go over, go over. All right, get away, get away. This cake. That was great. That, that was unbelievable. I, I can't, I was just holding my breath till we got that thing in. Um, it, it cracked off, it cracked off pretty even. Um, that's a keeper, that one, that one's good. Um, we just have to pray the annealing process works now. I thought that this was gonna be a physical project, that it would, tax us physically, but what's amazing is how much mental energy has gone into this. Thinking about what if and how to and where and how, how it's all gonna happen. For me, this challenge taught me something, that I can do more than I think I can do. I just have to work at it and I just have to challenge myself and and in the future I hope that I can challenge myself I hope that I won't need a museum to to set down the gauntlet